The Education Channel presents District Digest, an inside look at the Collier County Public School District. First, the latest news. Thanks for joining us. Here's what's happening. Grab your lab coats. We're heading to the science fair. Both students and judges share with us why this event is such a rewarding experience. So this is our Collier Regional Science and Engineering Fair. Uh, this is a culmination of the science fair projects that have been done throughout the region. Uh, each school had their own regional fair. Uh, and then the winners from those fairs come to this fair and compete. So I was interested to see um, if gas stations polluted the soil. And if it pollutes the soil, it can also pollute the groundwater. I just love the science fair. <laughs> it reminds me when I was a kid doing science fair experiments. My project on the aeronautical principle of forced air propulsion. So what I experimented on was how to reduce enough inertia so I can overcome friction. See how it moves like smoother and so the air can come out of here of these holes because these holes is what makes it you know float off a little bit so it can reduce friction. Tell me about your project. This is really great. This is one of the highlights of uh, working with the Collier County Public School District. Um, these kids are so excited to be here. They're so excited to be sharing what they've learned in science and it's really rewarding. Since gas stations you know affect our health um, maybe there's like some type of way we can like better that so then not as many people become sick. I think that the science fair enhanced your knowledge more because you have to do so much research when you're doing your project and when you do the research you get to tend to learn more and it kind of helps you build up like your knowledge. It's really a treat just to talk to each one of them and to see their you know the the budding scientists really is it's kind of enjoyable for me and I think it's also enjoyable for them and kind of a, a nice reward for the hard work they've done. All different people can be scientists and it's not just white lab coats and dorky glasses. And this is a, a great way to see that. Um, all different projects, all different types of science and all different types of people. Now coming up on this edition of District Digest, we'll preview the big spelling bee coming up in March. Plus, if you love cars, planes or food, one of our schools is putting on an event you won't want to miss. Then we head out to Immokalee to meet a truly inspiring student. And finally, we visit with the Boys and Girls Club of Collier County and find out about a special celebration they have coming up. That's all straight ahead on this edition of District Digest. Plus, this is Tracy Kohler. Join me for a special feature here on District Digest coming up in about 10 minutes. We'll tell you what's cool in school. Please stay with us here on the Education Channel, your window to education. On the air on Comcast Cable 99 and online at CollierSchools.com. Collier County Public Schools. Today's learners. Tomorrow's leaders. District Digest continues with a special feature. Well, our first guest on District Digest is Dana Tracy, the coordinator of the Spelling Bee. Dana, welcome to the program. Thank you. Spelling Bee is always an exciting time of the year. I love watching the Spelling Bee. When is this year's district spelling bee? Our district bee is March 5th at 7 o'clock, and um, we invite anybody in the district to come and, and watch our fantastic spellers throughout the district. And we're going to be televising it live on the Education Channel as we do, as we have for the many, many years. Yes. Yes. And it's so exciting to watch. It is very exciting to watch. Um, the kids are amazing, are absolutely amazing. And then to have that added pressure of the television mm -hmm. on them, um, <laughs> or the cameras on them, they, they get so much out of this. They, it's quite amazing. Mm -hmm. So how do the students qualify for the District B? Every school that um, has registered with Scripps Howard is allowed to participate. Um, they have their own Bs, the school has their own mm -hmm. B, um, and then they determine the winners. They can send up to three children um, from their school and any grade level can be represented. It could be all eighth grade or sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, um, however they choose. Um, once they qualify at the school, I have the information on the children and then they are able to attend on the night of the B and participate. Mm -hmm. But it is limited to middle school students. It is limited to middle school students as long as they have not turned the age of 15. Okay. But this, the B is open to private schools as well. Yes, we have several private schools that participate, um, home school um, students that participate um, as well. Um, the only 
thing that we ask and that Naples Daily News requires is that the school registers with Scripps Howard. Mm -hmm. um, if a school would like to participate, they certainly can in the District B, but if they have a winner, we can't send them on to the National B. Mm -hmm. So how does a student prepare for a spelling bee? I mean, some kids just have a knack, but I'll tell you, watching these words, ah, there's some of these words that are completely over my yes. head. And they're, they're quite skilled at this. <laughs> Um, a lot of it is natural, mm -hmm. but so many of them spend time after school with their friends, um, going through dictionaries and encyclopedias and so forth. Um, of course, in our language arts classrooms, we do a lot of word study um, and with Greek and Latin roots and so forth, um, which is very beneficial in the mm -hmm. spelling bee realm. Um, so they continue that type of practice. Um, Scripps Howard offers study guides for the kids um, just for practice and they're always amazed when they come to the B and say how come those words weren't the words you asked us <laughs> um, but it is just meant for practice purposes um, and then there are multitude of uh, websites and so forth that have lists that they can practice from as well. Mm -hmm. You were talking about the word origin. I love to, to see, you can see the wheels turning in the students when they ask those questions yes. and sometimes that light bulb goes off mm -hmm. and it's those questions that they've asked that then they're like, okay, now I know yes. what those, how those words are typically spelled. Yes, absolutely. It, it certainly does help them. You see more of that happening mm -hmm. in the national level than you do the district level, mm -hmm. but we do have some students that do ask questions like that when here at the district. Right. So Dana, let's go through how the bee works that night. Okay. When the, after the students register, we just get the butterflies out a little bit. Um, talk to the children again about um, instructions and directions and how it's going to work. So mm -hmm. uh, if they have any questions, we can get those out of the way. Um, when the bee begins, children basically go by number, uh, randomized um, of course, by school and so forth. Um, children are, are um, asked to speak in the microphone because this is all very new for them. Um, then we um, ask them to spell their first word. <laughs> um, when they finish the entire round, individuals who misspell go back into the audience. Mm -hmm. um, those who uh, spell correctly stay with us. And then we go into a vocabulary round um, where the individuals are given a, a term or a sentence and have to give us the correct vocabulary um, term that would, that would answer the question. Mm -hmm. um, after a few of those rounds, we move on mm -hmm. into spelling again. So what happens at the district level with the winners? What do we get them? At that point, uh, we have three winners. The top winner goes to Washington, D.C. and participates in the National Bee, and that top winner has a um, all-expense-paid trip wow. to D.C., um, including um, an adult uh, supervision. Mm -hmm. um, so um, it's a wonderful experience, but they also receive um, subscriptions to an encyclopedia, um, course certificates. We've had community members donate um, certificates for um, museum visits or oh, what right. have you as well. So it's quite quite an accomplishment. Wonderful. Well, I tell you, I, I invite anybody that hasn't mm -hmm. ever seen the spelling bee, they need to tune in or come to the, the administrative center and watch it that night because they will be fascinated with Absolutely. the level of expertise of these students. Absolutely. Great. Thanks so much, Dana. Thank you. You're watching District Digest on the Education Channel. Our next guest is Denise Duzik, with an administrator with Lorenzo Walker Institute of Technology, and she's here to talk to us about an amazing event you guys have coming up. Yes, thank you so much for having me, Katie. On Saturday, March 7th, we will be having our fourth annual Fly and Cruise in Pancake Breakfast at the Naples Airport, and it is a fun, fun day. We encourage everyone to come. It's not only a car show, we also have amazing airplanes on display, the military museums open on that day. There's live music and, of course, the main event, which is the pancakes, sausage, orange juice, and coffee. Wonderful. Now, why is this event so important for, for Elwit? It gives us an opportunity to showcase all of the amazing things that we do at Lorenzo Walker Institute of Technology. 
we've been in existence for 42 years. Most of our graduates remain in Collier County. Our students are volunteers at this event. All proceeds go to help support their education, but it gives us a, uh, an opportunity to showcase our auto tech program, auto collision. We have a fully FAA approved airframe and power plant program. Culinary Arts produces the pancakes, and it all really comes about because of our strong community partners who support our school, like Naples Municipal Airport. Wonderful. And I'm not sure if you mentioned um, how much it costs and what you get with that. Absolutely. It's a very minimal fee of $10, which is a great, great deal considering you get so much. You could literally spend hours there listening to the live music, seeing the museum, eating your pancakes, walking around and seeing the cars and um, the airplanes and all proceeds go to help support our students in their educational efforts. That's wonderful. Now, have the kids been excited preparing for this event? We have been working on this for a whole year, and a lot goes into the planning and preparation of it. But no matter how hard we work, we do it with a smile on our face because it just is so much fun. It's a lot of fun to see all the cars, all the planes, it's just a really high energy level event and it, it's just a whole lot of fun to prepare for and, and attend, be a part of it in any way. And wonderful that uh, Naples Airport gives you guys this, this Absolutely. facility. Absolutely. To... The city of Naples is extremely supportive of our school. Mayor Soliday and um, all, Mayor Sori and Ted Soliday are just wonderful supporters and they are out there themselves helping with cooking the pancakes. Mayor Sori is actually an amazing pancake cook. I think <laughs> he's much faster than many of our students in culinary arts. But um, everybody's out there on their staff as well doing everything from cleaning up the garbage to cooking the pancakes. So This is the fourth year for the event? It is. So what was the highlight for you last year? Well. The highlight, I really think, was the um, competition for the prizes for the car shows because the, the ladies and gentlemen who bring their cars have such a passion for that and take so much pride in their vehicles, and they are really, really amazing. So we did have a comp competition for various categories of the cars as well. Also, I should mention Dr. Patton always attends. She helps to flip the pancakes. Last year, <laughs> she read the announcements of the winners of the car show and got to race around the field a little bit with one of the winners. So I think that was probably the highlight for me personally. That's wonderful. OK, again, give us the details of the event one more time. It is Saturday, March 7th, beginning at 8 AM, ending at noon. We have pancakes, sausage. We have the military museum cars, planes, and lots and lots of fun. Wonderful. Well, we look forward to this event, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. District Digest continues as we open your window to education, taking you inside the classroom so you can see what's cool in school. With BYOD, STEM, and today's cool school technology, here's Dr. Tracy Kohler. Each year, the Florida Council of Instructional Technology Leaders, or FICTL, releases their call for nominations for the Technology Innovative Principal of the Year. Every school district is allowed to submit one nominee. This year, we are excited to have Golden Gate Elementary School Principal Chuck Franz represent Collier County Public Schools. Let's take a look at the video we submitted that highlights the work of Chuck Franz and his staff. Melanie, remember, I have the technology meeting today. I know, Mom. Mr. Franz sent me a notice on Edmoda. Well, excuse me a little, Miss Technology. I didn't mean it like that. It's just that school is different now than before. I can't imagine school without using technology. I'm so proud of you, but now make sure you and this device are not late to the school, okay? I know, Mom. Te quiero. Bye. Bye.
At Golden Gate Elementary, we integrate technology across the school day. That begins with teachers learning new technology in all of our professional development sessions and integrating that into their instruction. As a Title I school, we are working hard to close the digital divide and provide devices to students through grant funding. These devices allow us to use programs like EduCreations. EduCreations allows students to record the problem-solving process, thereby sharing it with others. Our students are also using tools like Padlet and Edmodo to connect with each other so they can share resources and further their skills. Our students are also using little bits in creative ways by not only learning how to work as a team, but also to engage in project-based learning. Students are also using programs like Fast Math and iReady. Teachers are able to view daily reports and adjust their instruction accordingly to evaluate the effectiveness of digital learning. None of what we do at Golden Gate would be possible without our parental involvement. We host monthly parent meetings that integrate not only technology, but STEM concepts. We routinely have hundreds of parents attend these events. Our teachers, students, and parents are all working to foster a digital community within our physical community. Arroz con pollo? Yeah, sure. So tell me why you did it today. Mom, I could tell you or I could show you. Show me? Yeah, telling you, that's so old school. Remember, my whole world is on this. Great job, Golden Gate Elementary. We are also proud to announce that Chuck Franz was selected as one of the top three finalists for Technology Innovative Principal of the Year in the state. And now you know what's cool in school. District Digest continues with a special feature. This week we're taking District Digest on the road. We're at Immokalee High School and we're here visiting uh, Immokalee senior Regine Francois. Regine has an amazing story to tell. Uh, we'll start with the detail of the newsworthy part of it. You were named the Outstanding Philanthropic Youth by the Everglades Chapter of the Association of Fundraising Professionals. Yes. <laughs> What kind of fundraising did you do that earned that award? Um, I think that award was mostly about service because philanthropy, many people think it's just donating money or sponsorship and stuff along those lines. But I think I was nominated because of my service to the community and that type of philanthropy. So it was because instead of taking the kind of the excuse of, oh, I don't have enough money, I can't help people financially, but I was donating my time and helping them in that capacity. You've been popular lately on the media circuit. <laughs> you were the face at the uh, Meet the Kids event for the, the Wine Festival uh, fundraising event for the uh, Naples Children and Education Foundation. Tell me about that experience. That was a great honor because I didn't even know I was going to speak and just being able to speak in front of all those wonderful people and donors to that program was just phenomenal. Um, it was great because I was able to meet the people who actually help us because I am part of the Guadalupe Center which is sponsored by the Naples and Children Education Foundation and just being able to come into contact with these people like they were the ones changing my lives they are the ones who give me the ability to be able to do all the things I did so it was great to be able to speak to them. How were they able to change your life? Well um, the Guadalupe program specifically gets funded from them and I've been in the program since I was a sophomore in high school and what the program is it's kind of a college prep program so they give us ACT classes, SAT classes, also we receive a job so I've been tutoring, I've been an elementary tutor since my sophomore year, I've tutored kindergarten and first graders and each every two weeks we get a paycheck like normal but every year that we work we're able to receive up to four thousand dollars in scholarship funding so that's a bonus especially for my parents who have six children I'm one of six I'm the oldest of six so that 
is a big difference going from zero to having some money to save and motivate me to go to college because it becomes possible now. And also, go back to that point for a second because this money matters greatly to your family, yes, yes. right? Talk about where you've come from and where you are. So I was born in Haiti. My parents, my family and I were born in Haiti and I came to the United States with my two brothers and sisters and my parents when I was four years old. Since then, I, we've doubled in size. So now there's six kids and um, Haiti is a poor country. It's one of the poorest countries in the world. So my parents were not able to even receive an education. My mom started going to school for a little while and then her parents deemed it was more necessary for her to commit to her household chores and care for her mother's 11 kids. Yeah. So, um, and my dad, he started school for a little bit and he got a little further than my mom but came to America because of the better opportunities that America had. And eventually he moved my whole family. So we've been here in Immokalee for the past 11 or 12 years. You know hunger. Yes. Um, Haiti is full of hunger and coming to Immokalee, Immokalee is already an underprivileged town itself. Everyone's hungry. Um, like my parents and I, it's, it's a struggle for them to be able to buy to pay for our bills and even buy food and put food on the table i know there's been a lot of nights where my siblings and i like we've gone to sleep with not much in our bellies and it's kind of gotten to the point where we're used to it and we don't let that prevent us from moving on so it is a difficult situation but when you're growing up when you grow up in that circumstance there's nothing to do except keep going and moving forward so it's just been really hard for um my parents but it's also been motivating because I know like that's not the life that I want that's not the life I want to give to my children so their story inspires me to go and do better things you're in the process of breaking the cycle of poverty for your family right yes the cycle of poverty not just for my family but in the town of Immokalee is very prevalent and I think what's really important it's not the fact that I've had achievements or that I've been honored at these events but the fact that I can see like little kids looking up to me and saying wow she did it like even some of my peers have come up to me telling me how inspiring I am to them like that's really what gets me because I see that I'm not just impacting my life I'm not just going to have a better future for me and help my family but other people are also looking at it and they're using that they're like I want to be like her or I want to do greater things than her and that's what's really empowering for so, me. So your parents didn't go to college yet you're going to college right now in high school as a dual enrollment at FGCU. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes. That's awesome. That is awesome. But but you're not you're not even anywhere near done. Talk about where you're looking to go to college. I am looking to go to college at Georgetown University. I've also applied to several other schools including Cornell, University of Virginia, Bowdoin College among several others. At any of these colleges, I would be very content, very satisfied. They have wonderful programs and they're the top schools in the country. Um, what's going to be the deciding factor is financial aid because like I mentioned I come from a family of six and my parents have very limited funds so depending on financial aid and major these colleges are wonderful I've researched their programs what are you gonna be what's the big dream my ultimate goal is to own my own nonprofit organization to address hunger because like I mentioned I've suffered from it a lot of people my friends my family have suffered from it so I want to help reduce its prevalence, especially coming from Haiti and having that background. I just want to help the people who can't help themselves and I feel like I would be able to do that, especially because hunger is one of the key issues and still one of the biggest issues in the world, like biggest problems in the world. All right, last question because I think this is the ultimate point to end on with you. I've heard you say in a speech once or twice, I'm resolute in my desire to succeed despite my circumstances. Tell me about that. I am resolute to succeed despite my circumstances. I think that is the best sentence to describe my life because I come from poverty, I live in poverty, but I won't let poverty define me. And I think that should be the mindset of all these kids in this town because we have dreams and we have the right to chase them, like one of the uh, artists said in his song. And I just think it's important to not let obst obstacles hold people back and just to keep pushing forward. I know through God and through my faith, I can do whatever I set my mind out to do. And I have a lot of support. And I think that's what's going to make my dreams come true. Virginia, you're an inspiration. I know you're an inspiration to the students here, but all the people that got to meet you in the last couple of weeks throughout Collier County, thank you for taking time to talk to us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> District Digest presents a community update. 
Our final guest today is Teresa Shaw. She is the president and CEO of the Boys and Girls Club of Collier County. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Katie. I'm delighted to be here. Wonderful. So let's, let's start with what the mission of the Boys and Girls Club is. The mission of the Boys and Girls Club is to enable and inspire all young people, especially those kids who need us the most, to become productive and caring citizens in our communities. And how many youth are served in this local community? Over 3,000 youth are wow. served in our local com community. We have a, um, our main campus is on Davis Boulevard. We serve young people in Immokalee at Immokalee Middle and Immokalee High School. We also provide uh, services at uh, Tommy Barfield as well as Mantity uh, Middle School. And what type of programs do you guys offer? We have a, an array of programs that we offer. What we'd like to do is really align ourselves with the school system to give support to those children who need extra help academically after school. So we have a homework help, we have mentoring, we also have tutoring, and we provide specific uh, programs in the areas of academics, science, math, technology, uh, we have STEM labs, and then of course extracurricular activities that our young people continue to need so very much. So we provide the arts, physical education, and then array of opportunities, career opportunities for our, our young people. Let's talk about the Youth of the Year program. It's in its third year. What is it all about? It is. The Youth of the Year is a national and it is our premier um, program here in, in Collier County. We look at over 20 young people who compete for the Youth of the Year. And they focus primarily, the program focuses primarily on academic success, we look at leadership and character. We also look at volunteerism. We look at a lot of things of the holistic approach of, of making young people feel good about themselves to aspire to really become productive young people. So the program is a 12-month program, and it starts with uh, competing with public speaking, with doing well in high school or in, mid in middle school, and so then the young people compete against each other, and we have judges. Uh, and then the winner in our local uh, Youth of the Year moves forward to our region. And if they make it through the region, then they go to the state. And from the state, they go national to Washington, D.C., and have the opportunity to meet the President of the United States. Wow, yeah. that's a great experience. It's an awesome. And throughout all of that, they are provided scholarships that will help them to continue their education after high school. Wonderful. Now, yeah. I know you guys have a Youth of the Year celebration on March 2nd. March 2nd and at Artis Naples. Uh, and we also will be having Sugar Ray Leonard. Ooh. Yeah. And Sugar Ray Leonard uh, is a product of Boys and Girls Clubs. He grew up in Boys and Girls Clubs in the Maryland area. And so we're delighted to have him uh, to be our guest. And our kids are really excited. And he'll be stopping by the club, too, to uh, also meet with a lot of the kids. So we're really excited for the event. Wonderful. Now, if someone is interested in attending the event or joining as a sponsor, how do they get involved? Well, it's really simple. They can go online to our website at bgccc.com. Uh, and uh, when you go in, you can click uh, events and you'll see everything about the youth of the year and you can certainly attend. Uh, we have a cocktail and dinner hour from 6 to 7 and then from 8 to to nine is the program time. So you can select which one you would like to be a part of. So we'd like uh, to ask uh, people to please come out and join our kids and celebrate their success. They've worked very hard to be where they are and we're, we're most proud of them. That's wonderful. Now, if somebody wants to just get involved in the Boys and Girls Club of Collier County um, as a volunteer opportunity, what kind of opportunities do you have for that? Many opportunities. <laughs> as I mentioned before, we have specific programs in immersion that uh, ask for mentors and volunteers to come in and help with that program. We also have one-on-one -on -one, uh, mentoring that is needed and tutoring that is needed for, for young people in the academic area. So there are lots of opportunities. We have over a hundred tutors right now, but we could certainly use more. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much, Teresa, for joining us thank today. Thank you so very much for having me. And we thank all of our guests, and we thank you for watching. For Leanne Zinzer, Greg Turquetta, and all of us here at the Education Channel, I'm Katie Tanner. We'll see you next time. Join us again for District Digest, your inside look at the Collier County Public School District. 
the show is produced by the District Communications and Community Engagement Department and the Education Channel, your window to education.